2016 now upon us. I'm kind of taking the vision for this OTRS Central Channel to do a combination of new and different things, and at the same point in time, going back to some of the things that have worked in the past that I've enjoyed in the past. And one of those things is the Triple Threat video series. So a reminder for those of you that might be not be clued in on how this works. I talk about three topics throughout the world of professional wrestling, and my hope is to cover each of the topics in three minutes or less. And speaking of something else that is old, that is technically new again, I suppose, if you have never done so before, or if you've done so before and you need an excuse to get yourself kind of amped up and excited for the 2016 Royal Rumble, make sure you check out my old Royal Rumble review series. That link is in the description box down below. So let's get on to this week's Triple Threat. We're going to talk about The Rock at WrestleMania, Joey Ryan's penis power, and the potential for the 2016 Royal Rumble winner. So at the end of the day, The Rock is going to be at WrestleMania 32. And I think most of us deep down believed that this was going to happen, and many of us, myself included, wanted this to happen in some way, shape, or form, even with some of the recent reports that he might not be there because of conflicting schedules and other issues. At the end of the day, The Rock's going to be there. And you know what's funny when you think about it? This is going to be the sixth straight WrestleMania that The Rock's involved with. Guest host of 27, beat Cena at 28, lost to Cena at 29 when he was the champion heading into the show. The promo segment to kick off WrestleMania 30, the promo segment with Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania 31, his sixth straight WrestleMania. And technically, he doesn't have to do it. And me personally, I'm appreciative that he still chooses to. But with this being the sixth straight WrestleMania, I think you've got to do a little bit something different with him this time around. I know him, he's hyping it up on his social media, talking about it's going to be uh, big and it's going to be some kick-ass shit. And I ultimately hope it is. And I'm very curious to see how the WWE chooses to utilize him here. Because the last two WrestleManias, he's been involved in a promo segment. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you talk about The Rock, there's never anything wrong with involving him in a promo segment. However, do you want to really utilize a big name and a huge draw like this in the same way for the third straight year? I just don't think it's the most effective utilization of him. Now, some will go to the family lineage and talking about his appearance back at the 2015 Royal Rumble. And now maybe he'll get involved with the match that involves Roman Reigns that may be against Triple H. And they could sit there and say, yeah, that could work, and that could make some sense. It'd be a big kind of huge surprise type of deal, even though you would see it coming. If you got to the main event and you still hadn't seen The Rock, you would know it was coming. But is that really the best way to utilize The Rock and what he could bring to the table? I don't think so. I still think somehow, some way, at the end of the day, the best utilization for The Rock and the only really appropriate utilization for The Rock at WrestleMania 32 for the type of show that they're going to try and put on the WWE, that is, and the audience that they're going to try and draw into that show, it's got to be a match against Triple H. That would be something big. That would feel like a bit of a clash of the titans. These guys have a lot of history going back years and years. And you could still buy into a story between these two. Who's the greater wrestler? Triple H. Is it The Rock? Who's the bigger star? Who's more important in the history of the WWE? And then you throw into me the most interesting subplot of all. Triple H, you jabroni, you're the reason I can't make a son. And then Triple H goes, a god. Well, even though I'm god, uh, for some reason I still can't make a son, uh, which means, uh, it's all the fault of you and the rock bottom and the people's elbow. Uh, oh, could you imagine the intrigue? Could you imagine the possibilities? Triple H versus The Rock. WrestleMania 32. The winner gets the right to someday possibly make a future son. Sign me up for that shit. I think at times, all of us forget that professional wrestling at the end of the day is still supposed to be a form of entertainment. It's supposed to entertain us. And by God, it should be fun. And we should have fun with it. I think as fans, we're definitely guilty of that. I know I most certainly can be. And frankly, I think even more so, the wrestling companies can be guilty of that too. Uh, so, I'm usually in favor of trying to do something different, trying to do something outside of the box. Keeping wrestling serious yet light at the same time. And having some fun and doing different shit. Because, at the end of the day, these are grown men, basically in their underpants, grappling each other, holding each other close, you can't take this shit too seriously. We all know it's fucking scripted. 
So why not have some fun with it? However, sometimes when people try to make it fun and make it light, they just go to the other end and they make it stupid and they make it fucking dumb and they end up being a reflection of the problems of the professional wrestling business today. And in this case, I'm referencing the all of a sudden immense penis power of Joey Ryan. So let me get this straight. Somewhere along the way, Joey Ryan sits there and thinks up a spot, and he's like, Oh, I'll have everybody grab my penis. That'll get over. And then imagine having to go tell somebody about that spot. I want you to grab my junk tonight and, like, really dig in and really give it a pull and a squeeze. I mean, it's bad enough that people talk about professional wrestling and call the people that watch wrestling a bunch of gay virgins that live in their mom's basement. Now you're basically doing something that you know is going to get out there at the end of the day. You know is going to get a lot of attention. And for a business that has trouble getting traction, that is having trouble retaining its core audience, let alone growing and expanding its audience, Joey Ryan... And the people that he works with now in the ring have decided the best way to get positive attention in the professional wrestling business is for everybody to grab each other's dicks and let's have feats of strength with our cocks. Holy shit, what the fuck is wrong with the professional wrestling business? Over the past year, the four things that have gotten the wrestling business the most attention were all the whining and crying that the Daniel Bryan marks did when they were all butthurt that Daniel Bryan didn't win the 2015 Royal Rumble. When Hulk Hogan's video was released, and we all know what was said there, we don't even need to go there. The deaths of Dusty Rhodes and Roddy Roddy Piper, and a guy grabbing Joey Ryan's penis. And now to kick off 2016, lo and behold, wouldn't you know, now we've decided to make it a big, huge spot. We've expanded upon it. And now we've got five other guys grabbing each other's dicks and somebody grabbing Joey Ryan's dick, and we're basically doing fucking flips with your dicks. You know, we know it's scripted. We know it's fake. And again, I emphasize, it's okay to have some fun with professional wrestling. But this type of shit makes the business look stupid. And frankly, maybe it deserves to look stupid because the business and pretty much everybody involved with it at times could be absolutely fucking moronic. But this is the best way we decide to try and get attention on the business. Oh, let's go grab each other's dicks. You know, when we do that type of shit on YouTube, our videos get yanked. But here we got it. And then I think there are people that actually like this shit. That think that this is cool. You know, granted, I understand Ric Flair made a living for 30 plus years grabbing people's junk. I'm not exactly a big fan of that. But this shit is just to a whole different level of fucking stupid. Joey Ryan, if you want to show off your penis power, that's fine. Go get a woman and go get fucking laid and go make a bunch of bastard babies. Stop using your dick for fucking spots in wrestling matches. It makes you look stupid. It makes the fans who watch this type of shit look stupid. And ultimately, if this was your goal, well, <laughs> mission accomplished, it makes the wrestling business look fucking stupid too. And now since we're in the midst of Royal Rumble season with the calendar's official turning to 2016, I shift my focus to the Royal Rumble, and the thing that always fascinates me with the Royal Rumble is the Royal Rumble match, and who the hell is going to win the Royal Rumble match? And I'm having trouble figuring out where the WWE exactly is trying to go with this year's Royal Rumble. I really, really am. And this is where I almost wish, when Seth Rollins got hurt, they would have waited until the Royal Rumble to crown a new champion. It worked so well in 1992, we still talk about that Royal Rumble match to this day. I kind of wish that they would have went with that and went in that direction. Maybe it wasn't realistic, but from a fan standpoint, that's personally what I would have liked to have seen. Because when I look at the options that are out there, I just don't really see a lot of good options. So let's say you get to the Royal Rumble, or even before that, and you have Roman Reigns lose the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So now he would have been a two-time champion, and if you decide that you're going to have him win the Royal Rumble just to get another title shot at WrestleMania, that would just seem like overkill and a completely telegraphed force, and it would be an epic backfire, and more importantly, it would just make for really bad television. 
really bad television. It would make for a WrestleMania 32 title match that we would be very disinterested in. Now you could sit there and go with the angle of Triple H possibly winning the 2016 Royal Rumble. And it could work to a degree. Because when you're talking about the story between Roman Reigns and Triple H, it's got to culminate in a match between these two at some point in time. My fear is, especially with The Rock coming in, if they are going to do Rock versus Triple H at WrestleMania 32, it could lead to a big push rush force of Triple H versus Roman Reigns for the title. And if you do that, then still, who do you have win the 2016 Royal Rumble? Or if you wait to do it with Triple H and you do it later, then what do you do with The Rock? And then Triple H as a Rumble winner? Is that really the best utilization of the Royal Rumble? I mean, you could go back down the path of, let's say, having a Brock Lesnar win the Royal Rumble, and people would get behind that, and Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns 2 at WrestleMania 32? Yeah. Two badasses that'll stiff the fuck out of each other. It worked this past year at WrestleMania. Why the hell couldn't it work again? But do you really want to go back to a match you just had last year? If you're trying to make WrestleMania 32 seem like a really huge deal, would a repeat main event be the right way to go? I don't know. I mean, some of you might suggest having a Dean Ambrose win, and while the story works at the end of the day, do you really picture a Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns world title match being WrestleMania worthy? Hmm. It leaves me with only one other option of who they might have win the 2016 Royal Rumble. <laughs> John Cena. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you excited that The Rock's going to be involved with this sixth straight WrestleMania? What do you want him to do at WrestleMania 32? What do you think he should do? What do you think he will do? And do you care? What about Joey Ryan and his raging penis power? I know. Coming from the guy who talks about Cena's Jort Johnson and the raging ring boner, this shit, in my opinion, has gone too far and it needs to stop and it makes the business look stupid. Stupid! Do you agree or am I overreacting? And then, what do you think is going to happen with the Royal Rumble? Who the hell is going to be the 2016 Royal Rumble winner? And if it's anybody other than Brock Lesnar, would you be happy with it? Or is it just going to lead to more tears, more butthurt, more anger, and more disappointment amongst the hardcore audience? I have my opinions, but what say you? Let me know down below.